For today's video, we are going to talk about what is fractions and we are going to explain everything in details. So when we say fraction, it represents a part of a whole and fraction consists of numerator and denominator. For example, 3 over 5 is an example of fraction. 3 is the numerator, 5 is the denominator, and this line is what we call fraction line or fraction bar which indicates division. And there are different types of fraction. The first one is proper fraction, the second one is improper fraction, and lastly, mixed numbers. So when you say proper fraction, the numerator is always less than the denominator. For example, one-fourth, one-half, three-fourth, two-third, five over eight, and eleven over twelve are examples of proper fraction. So when you say improper fraction, the numerator is either equal to or greater than the denominator. For example, 3 over 3, 6 over 5, 7 over 4, 11 over 6, and 18 over 11 are examples of improper fraction. And lastly, when we say mixed numbers, these are numbers consist of whole number and fraction. For example, 1 and 1 third, 2 and 3 fifth, 5 and 3 fourth, and 8 and 1 fourth are examples of mixed numbers. So those are the basic concepts that you need to remember in order for us to understand what is fraction. So let's start and let's have an example. On the first set of example, we are going to express the following as fractions of the units indicated. On number 1, we have 6 as part of a dozen. So when we say dozen, that means 12. If you are going to write the fraction, we are going to have 6 over 12, but 6 over 12 can be written as 1 half because they are divisible by 6, and this will be our answer. On number 2, we have 3 months as part of a decade. So when we say decade, that is 10 years. And in a year, there are 12 months. So to find the denominator, let us simply multiply 10 times 12, and that is 120. So to write the fraction, that is 3 over 120. And 3 over 120 can be written in simplest form because 3 and 120 are divisible by 3. So this is 1 over 40, and this will be our answer. On number 3, we have 25 years as part of a century. So when I say century, that means 100 years. So this is 25 over 100. 25 over 100 are divisible by 25. So this is 1 over 4. And this will be our answer. On number 4, we have 2 quarts as part of a gallon. So when we say gallon, there are 4 quarts. So if you are going to write a fraction, this is 2 over 4 or simply 1 half. On number 5, we have 4 days as part of a week. So when you say week, that is 7 days. So this is 4 over 7. And this will be our answer. On example number 6, we have 5 pounds as part of a ton. So when you say ton, there are 2,000 pounds. So if you are going to write the fraction, this is 500 over 2,000, we can cancel the 0, it will give us 5 over 20, and 5 over 20 are divisible by 5, so this is 1 over 4, and this will be our answer. On number 7, we have 5 years as part of a decade. So when we say decade, that is 10 years. So this is 5 over 10, or simply 1 half. On number 8, we have 6 hours as part of a day. So there are 24 hours in a day. So that means if you are going to write a fraction, this is 6 over 24. And 6 over 24 are divisible by 6. So this is 1 over 4. And this will be our answer. On number 9, we have 1 inch as part of a foot. So when you say foot, there are 
12 inches and this is 1 over 12. On number 10, 5 as part of 8 member theme. So if you are going to write the fraction, this is 5 over 8 and this will be our answer. On the second set of example, we have true or false. We are going to write true if the statement is correct and we are going to write false if the statement is incorrect. On number one, a wool is always bigger than its parts. So basically, a wool is always bigger than its parts. So the answer here is true. On number two, a fraction of something is always equal to fraction of another something. So let's say, for example, if you are going to have 3 fourth and 1 half, 3 fourth is not equal to 1 half because 3 fourth is greater than 1 half. So the statement, a fraction of something is always equal to fraction of another something, that is false. Because a fraction of something is not equal to fraction of another something. On number 3, we have 8 over 5 is greater than 7 over 6. So how can we check if 8 over 5 is greater than 7 over 6? So the fastest way to do that is let's have 8 over 5 and then 7 over 6. Let us multiply 8 times 6 that is 48. 5 times 7 that is 35. And 48 is greater than 35. So therefore, 8 over 5 is greater than 7 over 6. So the statement is true. On number 4, we have 16 over 4 is equal to 20 over 5. So let us divide 16 over 4, that is 4. 20 over 5 is also 4. So therefore, 16 over 4 is equal to 20 over 5, and that is true. Or you can multiply 16 times 5, that is 80, and 4 times 20 is also 80, and that is equal. On number 5, we have 2 thirds is equal to 4 over 8. So let us have 2 thirds and 4 over 8. Let us multiply 2 times 8, that is 16, 3 times 4, that is 12, and 16 is greater than 12. So, 2 thirds is not equal to 4 over 8. So, the statement is false. On the third set of example, we are going to identify the following as proper fraction, improper fraction, or mixed number. On number 1, we have 5 and 4 over 4. Since we have a whole number and a fraction, so this is mixed number. On number 2, we have 15 over 7, and this is improper fraction because the numerator is greater than the denominator. On number 3, we have 8 and 1 third. Since we have a combination of full number and a fraction, so this is a mixed number. On number 4, we have 12 over 5. Since the numerator is greater than the denominator, so this is improper fraction. On number 5, we have 7 over 8, and this is proper fraction because the numerator is less than the denominator. On number 6, we have 10 over 10, so this is improper fraction because when we say improper fraction, the numerator is either equal or greater than the denominator. On number 7, we have 8 over 9, and this is proper fraction. On number 8, we have 16 over 18. So this one is proper fraction because the numerator is less than the denominator. On number 9, we have 21 over 21. Just like in example number 6, this is improper fraction. On number 10, we have 23 over 12. Since the numerator is greater than the denominator, so this is improper fraction. On number 11, we have 13 over 15, and this is proper fraction. Number 12, we have 21 over 22, so this one is proper fraction because the numerator is less than the denominator. 
On our last set of example, we have problem solving. On number one, the diagram shows the patio that the family Calma is planning for their new home. Each square in the patio represents a square meter. Some patio is covered by the roof of the house as shown in the covered area. As you can see in the given figure, each square in the patio represents a square meter. So let us answer the following question. On letter A, what is the total area of the patio in square meters? So to find the number or the total area, let us use the formula. Area equals length times width. So this will be our length and this will be our width. So let us have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So our length, that is 8. And to find the number of width, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that is 5. So 8 multiplied by 5, that is 40 square meters. And this will be our area. On letter B, find the perimeter of the patio. So to find the perimeter, let us use the formula. Perimeter equals 2 length plus 2 width. If the measure of this one is 8, the measure of the other side is also 8. And the measure of the width that is 5, the other side will be 5. So let us have 2 multiplied by length, that is 8, plus 2 times width, that is 5. So this is 2 times 8, that is 16. 2 times 5 is 10, and 16 plus 10 is 26 meters. So this will be our perimeter. On letter C, what part of the patio is covered by the roof of the house? So to find the part of the patio covered by the roof of the house, let us have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So this is 6 over the total number of square, that is 40, and that will be our area. So 6 over 40 can be written in simplest form because they are divisible by 2. 6 divided by 2, that is 3. 40 divided by 2, that is 20, and this will be our answer. On letter D, find the perimeter and area of the covered patio. So let us find first the area. Let us have 1 and 2, that is the length. And width, that is 1, 2, 3. So 2 multiplied by 3, that is 6 square meters. This will be the area. And for the perimeter, that is 2 length plus 2 width. So we have 2 and then for the width, that is 3. So let us have 2 times 2, that is 4. 2 times 3, that is 6. And that is 10 meters. And this will be the perimeter. On our last example, a square field measures 25 meters on each side. On letter A, what is the perimeter of the field? On letter B, what is the area of the field? If we are going to illustrate this one, let us draw a square. So each side, that is 25 meters. And when we say square, all sides are equal. So to find the perimeter, let us have the formula. Perimeter equals 4s. So we have 4 times s, that is 25, that is the side. So 4 times 25, that is 100, and then we have meters. So this will be our perimeter. On letter B, what is the area? So to find the area, let us have area equals S square. So this will be 25 square, or can be written as 25, multiplied by 25, and that is 625 square meters and this will be our answer so i hope you've learned from this video thank you so much for watching and god bless us all